Hello my friends, how are you doing? My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and today I'm going to show you five easy tricks on how to make your photos look more professional without working too hard for that. <laughs> I know that's part of the question, don't think I don't know. I know everybody wants the easy way out, today I'm going to show you how. Also a quick reminder, I'm part of the Lockdown 2020 project over on the official Affinity channel, so please check that out, I'm going to show you how I edited this alien landscape. All right, let's get started. So the first thing to get more professional results with your photography is to overshoot. What does that mean? Overshooting is when you take a lot of pictures, different perspectives, capturing different emotions and situations, trying out different kind of effects in the cameras. And some of them might be good. You try out different things. Afterwards, you can delete most of them, but some of them might catch amazing moments. And by the way, keep in mind, Things look different on the little screen on your camera or on your phone. This will really improve your photo scales. So the second trick is cropping. And I know that sounds super easy, but it's extremely powerful to do that. Here are some examples of pictures that have become icons because of the way the photographers cropped them. For example, this picture by Elliot Erwin. And you can see how much information is in the original shot. It was a completely different picture. And then it became an icon because of the way it was cropped. You can see how this condenses the picture, but brings out the story, the small size of the dog. You can now clearly see the sweater he's wearing. We have some guys in the background as a reference, and then the feet of the woman standing there, giving us even more reference and cute details on how small this dog actually is. Now here's another famous picture by Arnold Newman. Again, you can see all the information in the shot and this is the iconic picture that came from that. It's not just cropping, it's also rotating it a little bit and this completely changes the story and it brings something out that couldn't be found in the original picture. So you can see how powerful cropping is. Here another example by Alberto Corda who has photographed Che Guevara. Again, there is too much information. The guy here on the left, these kind of plants here on the right, there's a lot of stuff going on that diverts the attention from the main subject here and this is the iconic picture that we all know now the look on his eyes looks so intense while here a lot of that gets lost and now let's have a look on how to use that for example here we have a nice picture of a water lily but the blossom is kind of small in the picture there's a lot of stuff that we don't really need and the blossom is right there in the middle we could improve on that. So let's go over here to the crop tool. You can set up your own custom ratio depending on where you want to post that. So think a little bit about it. Is it for Instagram? Is it for Facebook? Is it for your slideshow stuff like that? They all need a little bit different ratios. For example, on Instagram, it's square. You have these guides here that you can use. Over here, it says overlay. You can choose between the thirds, golden spiral, and diagonals to give you a little bit more support deciding what kind of cropping you want to do. So for the cropping, I want to use the third grid and I want to crop way into the picture. You can see I want to put the lily down there into the lower third of our picture because this gives a very private nice moment now the water lily is really the star of the picture we are closer in there it feels more like this little wondrous wonderful world so this is a very different relation to the picture and to the water lily than we had before with this picture. So you can see this makes quite a difference. Let's go to the next picture we have here. And this is about color. Don't just go with white balance and then that's that. For example, here we have a really cool picture, but you can see we have a blue background and we have these kind of pink magenta colored blossoms here. We can go in here and create an adjustment for selective color. And selective color gives us the benefit that you can select individual colors here, like red, yellows, greens, cyan, blues, magentas, all these kind of things. And what we want to influence here are the blues, the cyans, and also the magentas. Okay, so let's go for the blues first. And I want to pump up the blue in this case and reduce the magenta in here. Let's see, maybe also reduce the uh, yellow a little bit. 
Okay, let's go over to the science and push that up quite a bit. You can see how that goes stronger. Remove the magenta from that area like that is okay. And now we go to the magentas here, which is the blossom color, so you can see here, and pump that up quite a bit, like so. And maybe reduce the blue out of there a little bit. Let's see what the yellow does. Oh, uh, no, we can leave that in the middle. So you can see now we pushed the distance between the blue and the red tones or the magenta tones in this case a lot more. It gives better contrast. This is the original picture and this is our edited version. You don't have to go for this kind of look, but playing around with colors to see what kind of look you can create, what kind of story, what kind of impression you want to put into the image can be a very nice and easy tool to create your own style, to create your own expression. What is the idea that is in the picture? Should it look a lot colder, a lot warmer? Do I want something that's a bit frightening? Do I want to have a laugh scene? Is it like, what kind of feeling is there? What kind of emotion do I want to transport through the image? And colors are an amazing way to do that. You could say the colors are basically the music that comes with the picture. So let's go to the next trick, guiding the eye with lighter and darker parts in the image. We have a frog and of course the frog is made to blend in with the leaves in the background, but for for us, he needs to stand out because we want the picture to show the frog. So what we can do here is, usually you could use a vignette here, the vignette tool in Affinity Photo, but it's not very flexible. So I want to show you another way. We're going here to the left side and using our shape tool, select the donut tool and you want to put a donut over all of the picture like so. Make it big enough. That's good, okay. And you can reduce the whole radius up here. So make the hole smaller like that, good. The next thing we're going to do is that we are going to create a curves adjustment like that down here and then curves adjustment and then put the donut on top of that, right click and mask to below like that. So now this works as a mask for our curve and now we can pull down here, you can see the outer parts of the image are getting darker. But we don't of course want to have this hard border, so what we're going to do is to select the donut again, just the donut this case, and then use blur and you can use even more blur, like if this hits 100 you can go in here and say 300, so this goes softer. You just need to make sure that the blur doesn't influence the corners of the image. So if this gets brighter at the sides in a way that hurts your image, you can zoom out there and then make this bigger and then use the whole radius to make that smaller again to adjust that. So you can see this is a very nice way to create a vignette and also what this does for us is I can now for example use it like this. I can make an oval vignette and then rotate it to the side to follow the shape of our frog. And so let's make this a little bit bigger here, like so. Good. So now you can see we have a bit of a highlight around our frog by making the surrounding darker. There is another thing though that captures our attention and that is detail. So what we want to do here is to put a bit more contrast on the frog, not on the surrounding. So we do basically the same thing, but the opposite way in this case. So what we're going to do is to create an adjustment layer for brightness and contrast. And then we are going to create a shape for ellipse and pull the ellipse over all of the frog like so. Now right click on the ellipse, which sits on top of the brightness and contrast adjustment and then click mask to below. So this again creates a mask for our effect and now we can double click on our effect and say we want to have more contrast in that area here. Again, you get these kind of hard borders. So go to your ellipse and blur that so that's softer around that. You can also move your ellipse around so you can place the effect exactly where you need it, maybe rotate it a little bit. And you can see that this gives us a lot more attention on the frog. This is the original image. 
And this is the changed image where we have a lot more attention on our frog. Of course, you can say if this is a little bit too dark, you can make the picture brighter again, like so with adjusting the curve. So you have all the freedom. It's completely non-destructive. So that's very, very helpful. So the last trick I want to show you today is by using one of my cat pictures. I want to crop it, of course, as I showed you before. So we have this 16 by 9 ratio. Let's pull this down a little bit, maybe. So the cat is more in the center. All right, so here is the trick of what you can do with that. You duplicate the layer, and this is a trick that I have shown before, but here is the advanced version of that trick. Set it to soft light, you know that much, but the next step is amazing, look at that. Go to effects here, click on preserve alpha for Gaussian blur, and then move up your radius to blur the picture, and as you can see here, you can decide how strong the effect is and you also get this kind of soft glow around the image. So that's pretty cool. And just with this one effect, you can see the picture gets warmer, it gets more contrast. It also has this kind of soft effect on it. So that is pretty cool. Now, the next step we have already seen, but I want to show it again. Go here to adjustments, selective color, and now again, I can play around with the color. So in this case, we have some red values here and we have some yellow values in the cat. So here we have the red values. So let's push this up because actually the couch is pink that the cat is lying on. And then let's remove a little bit of the cyan. And then we go to the yellows and we can push the yellow a little bit maybe. Let's see, let's remove a little bit of the red maybe. Let's see what the blue does. We can remove a little bit of the blue. And you can see now we have a nice picture that also accentuates the different features of the cat, like the cute red nose and the bright yellow eyes now. And you can see if I select both of these layers and turn them off, just these two adjustments is a super easy way to give you a better picture. Before, after, before, after. Well, that's for this tutorial. I hope you like my tricks to make your pictures look more professional. I also want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make this video possible. This is very, very much appreciated. Thank you for being one of my supporters. And if you like my videos, maybe subscribe to my channel, give me a like or even leave a nice comment. Thank you very much. And if you have more questions, also put them in the comments. Thank you and see you soon. Bye.